Let's take a look at what Milton Friedman said here about inflation and alcoholism. Let's take a look at this. Inflation is just like alcoholism. In both cases, when you start drinking or when you start printing too much money, the good effects come first. The bad effects only come later. That's why in both cases, there's a strong temptation to overdo it, to drink too much and to print too much money. When it comes to the cure, it's the other way around. When you stop drinking or when you stop printing money, the bad effects come first and the good effects only come later. That's why it's so hard to persist with the cure. That's why it's so hard to persist with the cure. You know, sometimes, you know, we do workshops on a weekly basis, financial workshops on a weekly basis. Twice a week we actually do financial workshops. And people want to make a decision. They want to make a decision. I say, no, I ain't got the money. No, I ain't got time. Well, listen, you, you're not in a position where you badly want financial success. You're not in a position where you really want to be financially independent that bad. You know why? Because think about how bad you were just talking about. How bad somebody that wants that high, that is an alcoholic, that is, is high on drugs, how bad they want that high. They spend every last dollar. They sell everything. They lose their home. They lose their family just to get that high, just to get that fixed for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you tell me out there, you're in the position of mediocrity, and you don't want to invest your money. You don't want to put yourself in a better financial position because I'm too busy or I don't have money. Listen, one thing the pandemic has showed us that people got money to spend because the malls were packed during COVID. As soon as they start releasing people, people, so you're telling me an alcoholic, as hurtful as it is for me to say this, you're telling me an alcoholic, a drug addict, a gambler is more concerned and prioritizing their fix to get their thing than you about being financially independent to make sure your kids don't have these financial shackles of college student loan debt, that you don't, don't want to be in a position where you're financially free, financially independent, to not be affected by gas price and not be affected by $12, what, $12 uh, 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 pa uh, package of eggs. Mm. And so the effects of you fighting inflation, you the effects of getting your ass kicked by inflation, in the meantime, it, it's not going to be fun. But the long-term effects of you having the right activities compounded consistently over an extended period of time, then eventually creates exponential benefits. You know, a couple weeks ago, um, we were in Orlando. Remember our conference in uh, Orlando? Yeah, mid-year. Yeah, uh, mid-year event, uh, uh, doing the impossible. So we had America's IRA expert out there. Ed Slot is a CPA from New York. Mm. I was talking to him backstage. I said, uh, uh, what has been your observation of the most successful people in your career? He said, listen, uh, the more I watch people, here's, here's, here's my premise. If you do the same activities, the same constructive activities over and over every day for the next 20 years, then you'll be an overnight success. <laughs> 20 years. 20 years is an overnight success. And I, I said, cool. What about can I accelerate that to 10 years? Because he didn't have social media. Or technology on the right. when it was coming up. Yeah. So I think today, if you if you do the same thing over and over, the right habits, the right activities on a daily basis, you'll be an overnight success in ten years. But here the problem though, people don't want to hear that. People, I want success in the next six months, next twelve months. Okay, where's all the crypto guys now? Where's all the NFT guys now? You don't hear very much of them. You hear us. And by the way, it's not like we went away. So a lot of these guys have lost their wealth because they're looking for the next big thing. They got caught up. Let's go to the next video here. Uh, about celebrities making, um, actually, let's go to the next one, uh, Jordan. How wealthy people stay wealthy and what we can learn from this TikTok. Come on. Let's take a look at this. Well, let's say you buy a house for $100,000, guys, right? You only put down 20000 You put 20% down. The bank gives you the other 80000 mm -hmm. okay? Then Le leverage. you put $20,000 into the property to fix it up, which is value add, which is what Kenny was discussing. That property now goes up to 200000 Then you can go ahead and do a cash out refinance, and you could pull out, what, 70%? Remember, you only put in about $40,000 of your own money into the deal. Now you're getting 140,000 out. You can take that 140 tax free, which is the key, yeah. and roll it into buying another asset. You ain't paying it, your tenants are. Right. So right. why not continue to do that and buy and hold? Your this is how the wealthy stay wealthy. That off. Okay. Here's the, here's the danger in that premise. By the way, on paper it looks great. Every real estate by the way, I've been through recession in 01, 07, 09, and now this current economy a lot of guys love that talk. It looks great. Sound, it's only 20000 my own money. It's leverage money from the banks. But it, what do you say? You're not paying, making the payment. Your tenants are. Well, guess what happens during a recession? Tenants lose their job. When tenants lose their job, guess what? They stop paying. Rent. Rent. If they don't pay rent, guess who's got to pay rent? You do. If you don't have enough of a bankroll, enough money stuck in the bank to pay the mortgage or to pay the rent because they're not paying it, 
Guess what happens to you eventually over a three month, four month, six month period? You go into, you slip into default and you slip into foreclosure court. Now you're talking to the man. So real estate investing from the outside looks great, looks great on paper, but there's a lot of elements in that video there that they are not telling you about. But by the way, I respect the, uh, those guys, uh, uh, Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit podcast. Fresh and Fit guys there on, on PVD's podcast a minute ago. Respect to those guys and what they're doing. I don't agree with all the things that they talk about in terms of the, uh, the, the rib pill uh, types of society, but uh, that premise there in terms of just being a real estate investor, that's correct. There's, there's a lot of innuendos there. They're not talking a 30-second, 30 30 60-second clip. So even with our stuff, we don't want you saying, okay, Matt and Milton said this and this and that and take it as gospel. No, we want you to inspire yourself to awareness, to get more education, so therefore you can surround yourself with the right people on the right platform, so therefore the right things can happen in your life. So, Milton, I know you've seen a lot of uh, people uh, dabbling in real estate. People have been in intrigued to get you involved in real estate. What, you, you've invested in real estate to yourself. What's re the realities of real estate investing? The moment that, and forgive my language, but the moment that everything went to shit, <laughs> <laughs> the tenants immediately say, hey, Milton, I got furloughed. Yep. I, I can't pay the rent, man. I'm so sorry. And, you know, at, at first, you're like, you're, you're pissed off, but I, I blame myself for not doing the thorough. Well, first of all, I blame myself for getting family involved. That, that was my very first mistake, getting family, uh, getting, uh, lending a hand to a family member thinking that they would be able to be good for, for, the entire, for the entire thing, which is why now I understand you can't really mix family and business. Um, but no, man, yeah, for, what, well, for bro, six I, months, I had to pay. Uh, I'll put, I'll, by the way, I'll push back up to you on that one, but uh, go ahead, continue that thought in terms of family and business. Yes, yeah, for, for six months, I'm yeah. the one who, had to end up, uh, who ended up paying the rent. And that's when I wasn't prepared for that because yeah. I thought, oh, this is easy. I have a property. I rent the property. They pay it off. I charge a little bit more. I make some extra cash, use extra cash to pay off the utility bills or put it into a savings account so I can create more money, stack it up, and then buy another property. But then I wasn't expecting the interruption of, hey, I'm furloughed. I can't pay for this rent for the next X amount of time. Hey, Rich, oh. hey, Rich nephew. Hey, Rich family member. Yeah. You got me, right? Automatically, man. So... You got to learn the game. That's, that's, that's the, the very first thing. You, you can't be a rookie like myself and go into the game thinking like, oh, I got this. This is so easy. I'm just going to follow some guys on TikTok telling me what to do, how to do it, and then expect that it to turn out the way it should be doing when in reality you have no idea what the hell you're doing. Some yeah. of the biggest malls right now in America are defaulting on their mortgage payment. Biggest malls. Because they're not getting rental income from the big box stores like the Gaps, right? And, and you know, just the, the, the JCPenney's and the Sears and you know, the – Typical, you know, stores you see in the mall. They're not getting the rental payment from them, and they're not getting the rental payment. They can't make the mortgage payment, so they're slipping in default. And that's when opportunity exists for somebody that has cash and credit on their side, sitting on the sideline, ready to ready to go into the market. So, um, I know we're running short on time, but uh, I want to go to the next next video here. Um, um, Jordan, let's go to the uh, uh, U.S. government to hit debt ceiling. Let's skip a couple of those videos. U.S. government to hit debt ceiling uh, video. The next gen. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go to that one. The U.S. government hit debt ceiling and what that means to us. The U.S. might soon be unable to, to bar borrow money to pay its debts. Here's what's going on and how it's going to affect you. The debt ceiling is going to be hit on Thursday. Currently, borrowings capped at $31.4 trillion. If nothing happens, the Treasury Secretary can delay the default until June. If the debt limit is reached, interest rates would increase. Mortgage rates, credit card rates, and car loans would all be affected. Social security payments would come to a halt. Federal government facilities wouldn't stay open. Your tax refund might not go out. The value of the dollar would drop. And inflation and unemployment would likely spike. Overall, the domestic and global economy would take a massive massive hit. So what this means is that the United States of America cannot pay what it owes. So they have to raise capital, or in this case, increase debt to borrow more from the American people to add it onto the national debt to create the, the, the money, to create the payment, to pay off the debt that they can't afford to borrow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in other words, Milton, if you had $100,000 in debt and you couldn't afford the mortgage payment, Okay, you, see, you, got, you got some property, you had $100,000 in sure. You can't afford the $2,000 uh, mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. And then you go to another bank. Hey, can I borrow another fifty grand because I need some breathing room because I can't afford $100,000? They're like, no problem. What's it for? Oh, I can't afford to pay, uh, pay off my, my debt. So you ask for more debt because you can't pay off your original debt. What do you think the bank will say? Yeah. What, 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 what do you think they'll tell you? Hey, you, uh, you applied to a bank because you can't afford to pay off your debt, mm -hmm. but you need more money to pay off the debt. What do you think the bank will tell you? Yes or no? No. Of course. Yeah. If you can't afford to pay your original debt, why yeah. are you borrowing more money from us? from us? No is the freaking right answer. But guess what the <clears> politicians <throat> want to do? 
They want to increase the debt. And who, in turn, is going to pay for it? Us. Mm -hmm. And those things they just mentioned, they're going to shut down certain things. They're going to lower. That's why people that have Social Security today, back then you, t you were able to take your Social Security at full retirement age of 65. People today can't take out their Social Security until 67. If you're younger in age, 70. Mm. So they're pushing the age when you can take out your full retirement Social Security. Same thing too with these parks. You notice a lot of government facilities are starting to squeeze down their hours now. That's a result of it. So if, don't follow government as a way to manage your finances. Government is the worst example of financial management. It's the worst example because all they do is just fight around who gets the money. And if they can't uh, get enough money to their special interest groups, what do they do? They put on you as a taxpayer to raise more money. Which, by the way, we're the city and state where we're from, Chicago, Illinois, guess where the highest property taxes are in the United States of America? City of Chicago. By the way, I heard last night that uh, Mayor Lightfoot is out. She conceded. No way. We have a new mayor in Chicago. Valles, Latino. In Chicago. That's how that plays out. So, uh, hey, I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to that. Chicago definitely needed some yeah. different management because Chicago basically runs all of Illinois. Let's go to the last video here. Uh, TikTok video that uh, is very near and dear to my house, being Filipino, near and dear to my heart because I'm Filipino. Mm. Egg prices. Egg prices have risen 137% from last year. What? Let's take a look at this. Line of cars is 30 minutes long at Billy's Egg Farm in Southern California. I appreciate you waiting. And workers are scrambling to meet demand. We pack eggs in here 8 to 4 o'clock nonstop. He sells 25,000 fresh eggs a day for $5 a dozen. That's a pretty good bargain right now. Grocery stores are 7 to $9 a dozen. That's if you can find them. This is what a lot of store shelves here look like. Nationwide, prices for grade A eggs are up 137% from last year to an average of 425 a dozen. Why is there a shortage right now? What's going on? Well, I'm sure you heard there is a bird flu in the Midwest, and most of the eggs that come to our grocery stores here in California come from the Midwest. So far, almost 58 million birds in the U.S. have been infected or euthanized. It's the country's worst outbreak ever. But the American Egg Board says inflation is an even bigger part of the problem. And there's another factor in California. All eggs sold in the state now have to come from cage-free chickens, like Billy Mouse. It's, it's, it's expensive. Great political it's about move there. 20 to $25 per bird to switch over to cage-free. Do you think your price will come back down? I'm sure hoping so. I'm hoping it just levels off. We just picked up this dozen eggs for more than six bucks, but even at that price, eggs are still some of the cheapest forms of protein. And keep in mind, they last a month in your fridge, so there's no reason to rush out to the store. Prices have declined slightly in recent weeks, but Easter's right around the corner. Easter? What are you talking about Easter? You're talking about breakfast tomorrow morning. Eggs don't last in my household for more than a week. Shoot, five days. Expensive as omelet, man. So I, for breakfast, I eat uh, two eggs. And rice. And rice. Is that okay? Is that okay, breakfast? That's an extreme Filipino breakfast, huh? <laughs> That's a Filipino breakfast, Matthew. <laughs> it's tocino and longanisa <laughs> and some coffee. But uh, excuse me, uh, eggs, 137% increase in eggs. So inflation on top of that is tacking on the, the cost of these things. So when, when, you, when you're looking at, looking at these things, I've been actually looking around here in Dallas for a uh, local farm. I want to buy eggs from a local, local farm. farm. That's more so, like straight from the local farm without going through the grocery store. But I think we have more access to it here in Dallas, Texas, than you know, other big cities across Illinois. the country. But um, what's, what's, you know, what's, another, what's another form of protein, would you say, if, if people don't want to buy eggs? And by the way, there are people out there in, in our communities, we eat eggs every day, mm -hmm. every other day. If not that, definitely on Sunday mornings, you know, uh, right before doing what we do on Sundays. But uh, what's another form of protein that people can use for that, breakfast? That's also inexpensive if, if people get their ass kicked with the cost of eggs. Surprisingly, although eggs are expensive, chicken breasts are, are, are still haven't have still haven't been affected as much, which is surprising, right? You you would because, you because would, they, you they would just use that chickens, yeah. Yeah, you would assume that uh, chicken breasts and chicken as a whole will be affected, but ch chicken is a pretty good protein source. If you're looking for something more on the cheaper side, uh, attainable side, without having to prep uh, Greek yogurt for, for breakfast, really some Greek yogurt, maybe take some protein powder, scoop it in there, stir it up, make it into more of a pudding. The extreme high protein source, and you start your day off with high protein, you have high energy. And also, people who consume high amounts of protein are more likely to reduce in body fat in, in the long run and also have more energy throughout the day versus you consuming a high carbohydrate, uh, carb meal and fat meal. So, starting your day off with protein, 
your midday meal being high in protein, your end meal being high in protein is going to keep you sustained with energy and also going to help you have a lean body, especially that's what you're trying to attain in the next couple of months now that summer's coming up. Here's my antidote for combating gas prices and egg prices and inflation. Make more damn money. Increase your capacity, learn a new skill set, grow, develop, work it on the side. Don't wait for your current employer. Don't wait for anybody else to give you a pair that you think you deserve or you think that you're entitled to. The world doesn't owe you anything, man. Probably unpopular guidance there, but nobody owes you anything. You go out there and get it. This is America, the land of three, the home of the brave. Home of the free and the land of the brave. It's not for somebody to give it to you either. Mm. Just because our country is filled with freedom doesn't mean somebody's going to land freedoms on your lap. You got to go out as a citizen, exercise it, go demand it of yourself, not that, that you feel you're entitled for it. Demand it. Is it going to be a reality in my life or not? Because if you're looking at two guys right in this podcast, we're, we're not going to sit here and tell you to lower your standards. We're here to actually raise them. This can be a very annoying podcast for you to listen to week in, week out. And, and the right people will listen to it and the wrong people will tune out. But if you want to play financial offense, you want to play offense period in your <clears> life, <throat> get your financial resources together, get your financial house in order, stop with the complaining, stop looking for excuses, stop looking for a, a lower standard. We're in a situation right now where America needs warriors, not just warriors for, with helmets and rifles, warriors in the home, men to stand up, women to stand up, start working together instead of against each other. We're a very strong country when we're united, not divided. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.